This is the first video I think I've made like this since uh, social isolation has been a thing. Yeah, and I have to wear this hat because um, hair has gone a little bit mental. So the hat is staying on to um, control, control the thing. Today I thought I would talk about lenses. So I didn't want to go into too much detail into like, but yeah, lens wise, I thought I would talk about some of the things that people should look out for when they're buying a new lens. If you're new to photography, I thought it would be a good idea to maybe make like a quick guide and sum up some of the things that you should really look out for. What are you going to use the lens for is the main thing that I think you should consider when you're first buying a lens. Are you going to be going out the route of being a landscape photographer, focusing mainly on taking pictures of places and, or are you going down the portrait route where you want to be focusing on people? You'd be sitting kind of in that mid to telephoto range, wildlife photography or something like that. that. That can maybe stretch into the telephoto realm. Not necessarily strictly those three things, but those are the kind of three categories that kind of, for me anyway, when I'm thinking on something, on how a lens can be um, slotted into a category, I think is a little bit better. And before you purchase that lens, you kind of want to know what sort of photography do you want to be taking. Um, you got to think about how you're going to progress as a photographer when you're buying lenses. So whenever you're thinking about purchasing your lenses, I think in that sense, if you're going to spend a lot of money on a lens, you'll probably want to invest in a system as well. You want to stay on that system. So. I mean, if you're spending two to 3,000 quid on a lens, you want to be confident that you're going to be using that for a few years on that system. Focal length then is another thing to consider, and that will be heavily influenced by the type of photography you want to do. You'll have your wide lenses, which will go, excuse me, your wide lenses, which will go right from 10 to 25 millimeters would be considered wide for me anyway. 30 plus is you're going into that medium 30 to about 100 millimeters. You're in that medium reaching towards telephoto at the higher end of that. And then 100 plus for me is, is telephoto and, and your zoom lenses that get quite far. Um, you want to do portraits. As I said, you're going to be wanting to stick in that medium size uh, 50 to 100 millimeters, 100, 135 as well can be considered quite a good portrait lens. Um, your wide angles, again, going to be used for landscape, as I was saying, and the telephotos for nature. Not as I said, These aren't strict rules, but they're kind of guidelines of, if you want to aim for a specific type of photography. The next massive thing which can influence the cost of a lens is the f-stop. So going back to my previous video, the, the more lower the number, the more wide open the aperture is on it or your f-stop is on it and tends to be the more wide open your aperture is, the more expensive the lenses get. Your f-stop is a major thing that, you know, that, that, that you want to work on or you want to think about if you're going down that route. I mean, if you're a portrait photographer, having a really wide open f-stop and getting that bokeh is a big thing for yourself. Whereas if you're a landscape photographer, you may want to be capturing more than just a certain area or you might be focus stacking. So having a wider aperture, um, having a wider, having a wider focus plane would, um, be a lot more beneficial to you in that circumstance. And factoring in then from that, you want to know whether you want to go down the prime lens route or the zoom, right? right zoom lens route. Primes are fixed focal lengths. So prime example I have here is this 50 again, always going back to 50. That's prime lens. There's, there's nothing else that shoots at 50 millimeter in that 50 millimeters. And it does not move from that. I can adjust the aperture on it. The most it'll open to is F 1.2, but it's always going to be 50 millimeters. Then I have this 75 to 300. It zooms, it zooms from 75 to 300 aperture on this at 70, at 75, the aperture will sit at four. So it will always be at F four. But as I zoom through the range, this is why I don't use this lens. It clicks. does not sound good. Um, but as you zoom through the range, the aperture will actually get smaller. So by the time I'm at 300, the most I can open this up to is F 5.6, I think, which is what happens with cheaper lenses. You'll tend to find that the likes of your kit lens maybe will start at usually f 3.5 and by the time you've zoomed all the way into 70 millimeters if it's usually a full frame kit lens um by the time you zoomed into the 75 millimeters you will just be stuck with uh usually it's 5.6 usually is what they go to um and those sorts of lenses tend to be a little bit cheaper 
Another thing you need to keep an eye on when you're buying your lenses is that as well as being for the right system, that they are for the right format of camera that you have. So Sony are one company I know this can be a struggle with. Um, they have full frame cameras and crop sensor cameras that use the same mount. There are lenses that work perfectly well that are perfectly designed for the full frame and they'll work on the crop sensor, but crop sensor designed lenses won't cover your whole frame on a full frame camera. You'll end up with a, a ring around the edge and you'll only be able to see like a section of the, the image. So, so they have kind of combated this, like the a7 III that I'm using right now. That does have a crop sensor mode, but it cuts your megapixel count from 24.3, I think it is down to like about 10 megapixels. Okay, some of the smaller things that may influence whether you're gonna buy that is whether the lens have built, lenses have built in image stabilization, um, and then beyond that, your filter thread size. So if you have a set of filters and you're wondering whether they work or will fit on that lens. Lastly, I think the biggest and most important thing is your budget. All those things are gonna influence your budget. The, the maximum aperture, the focal length, um, whether they have image stabilization on them, whether they have, whether they're set for full frame or crop sensor lenses, uh, and whether it's a prime or zoom, all those things are gonna determine the cost of your lens. And the only person that can really decide whether they're gonna be spending the money on that lens is you when you're buying it. So I don't wanna say, yeah, go buy this. There's no such thing as a perfect lens, I don't think. Um, there's some good all rounders. As I say, I have my wish list. Um, I know if somebody gave me four or 5,000 quid, I know exactly what I would go out and get. The bodies come and go, the lenses will stay the same. So you invest in good lenses and you'll see the long-term returns on it. I've seen good lenses make cameras that I thought were crappy look better. I didn't think I could talk that long about lenses and I was just brushing the surface. There's a lot more you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If it gets, if it sees the light of day, I'm gonna start the edit on this thing right now. Um, again, if you did enjoy it, like, subscribe. There's two other videos I've already done, two or three other videos. Uh, look up my one on composition, just a basic overview of what I think my favorite things, favorite types of composition are, if I can remember that video. As well as that, I did a little beginner guide as well to explain some of the buttons and menus on your camera and how they affect how your photographs turn out. As well as that, I do run a weekly or bi-weekly, two weekly, sorry, every <laughs> second week, uh, I upload a vlog on the channel here as well with my goings on in the west of Ireland here and what I'm doing. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, and subscribe if you did. This is Quarantined Life. Hope you have all been doing well. Um, I think I'm into day 39. As I said, the hair is getting a bit long. The beard's making, getting fat. <laughs> and yeah, um, I've managed to round on for nearly 30 minutes. Please tell me this thing.